Welcome to UICA as well, the new UICA. How many people have not been here yet? Is their first time? What do you think? Yeah. In fact, this theater is not quite finished yet, but I told them they should leave it like this. I like it. It's raw, it's rough, it's cool. So, the topic, urban canvas. What is an urban canvas? We've had, uh, a lot of people in the community have had this discussion about um, a lot of cities, you can go to bigger, smaller cities in Grand Rapids, a lot of them, Ann Arbor, even Traverse City, Madison, Wisconsin, Boulder, Colorado, and the art community seems to pour out into the streets. It's not uh, contained in galleries and institutions, but it lives in the street. And when you look at downtown Grand Rapids, um, it gets accolades for being one of the, probably the cleanest downtowns in the Midwest. But is there a lot of street life? Are there street performers? Are there impromptu, um, just, you know, sculpture building or whatever, uh, you know, projection projects? All those different things that go on in these other cities. And um, if not, I think maybe we're starting to see more of that. But what can we do as a city, um, in the artist community, uh, the creative community, what can we do to foster more of that? Is it changes at the city level? Is it making things um, easier to do? Fewer permits? Just fostering more of it so that more people get the ideas to do it? Um, what are all the things that can be done? There are things being done. I don't want to discount what has been done. But um, I know a lot of people who would like to see more of it. So with that in mind, uh, we have an excellent panel tonight of people who um, are doing projects now who would like to talk about those, uh, tell you about those, and then we'll have a little panel discussion and then audience Q&A after that. So let's bring up our first presenter, Jen Schaub of DAC and Dwelling Place and Avenue for the Arts and Art Downtown. Thanks. All right, you guys. So, um, you know, we, we got together to have a little pre-discussion before tonight. And everybody said, well, this is kind of my viewpoint on this subject. This is what I do. And this is what I'm working on right now. And I thought, I'm not really working on anything exactly. Um, and I don't really make things that are public exactly. I'm more of the person who gets everybody together and makes sure that, they're, um, that they have the ability to do what they do publicly. So kind of, um, you know, when I've been asked what my personal interest is, it's helping artists move what they do in the privacy of their studios or in their homes out into the public realm. So whether that is through the DAC, which provides space for artists to use, whether that's through my job um, with Dwelling Place and the Avenue for the Arts, encouraging artists to show work in, a, in their own live workspaces or out on the streets, or through some of the events that I help coordinate, like the Avenue for the Arts market, um, I'm sorry, the market presented by Avenue for the Arts, we're going through some new branding stuff, and or um, art downtown. So I'm like your big, like Grand Rapids art cheerleader. So I am here to help you do what you do and get it in front of other people. And so I'm kind of setting the tone tonight um, in encouraging audience members um, to explore what options you might have, as well as just kind of looking over some of the ways that artists are making and creating work in the public in public spaces. And I have over the last couple of years. Um, done a couple of presentations about around this theme of how to throw a show and like what you need to do or different ideas investigating this theme of how to get out into the public space and so this little presentation is going to be a little augmented version of that and it's going to kind of talk about everything that these gentlemen who are um, joining me on the panel tonight do so it's a little preview so who I am um, this is a uh, that's my Facebook picture, so if you have that in your friend's feed, yep, that's me. And I am involved in a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm not going to go through it because it's kind of boring. But my cred is, I used to work right word on the street, which was a weekly blog about what to do in Grand Rapids. I've been on the DAC board for a really long time now. I think the only person who's been on there longer is George. And I run seven annual events in downtown Grand Rapids, helping to coordinate artists um, getting them involved in the local community. And I am sort of the coordinator for the Avenue for the Arts through my position at Dwelling Place. 
and it's all a very complicated relationship, and we can talk about it later if you'd like to. So, how to throw a show. So, I'm inferring that the artist can take charge of disseminating their work to the public outside of their studio spaces, and that it doesn't have to be formal, it doesn't have to be in the confines of a gallery, and that when you put something in the confines of the gallery, it can change the intention, and I think that, um, as Paul will probably discuss a little bit, context is, um, is a huge component of the work that you're making. And so, I'm very interested in less traditional forms of work, or how traditional forms of work can be shown in public spaces, especially those boundaries between art, crafts, consumable objects, and performance is something that I'm very interested in right now. Um, not interested in doing, but interested in seeing, and seeing more of in Grand Rapids. So how to throw your own show. I'm, I am a proponent, like, like I said, I'm a cheerleader for all of these things, like break out of your traditional gallery models, and why do it? You know, it's resume building. A lot of artists are thinking, a lot of young artists especially, are thinking like, I'm gonna wait until a gallery finds me or discovers me, and then I'll have a show, or maybe I'll go the traditional route and I'll apply for shows. But frankly, at the end of the day, there's no point in waiting for someone to find you when you can go out and find them. So, and also, one of the things that, for those of you who have been around for 10 or 15 years, you already know that because we've started throwing shows and we've been very active out in the community, we're creating our own scene and we have a dialogue going on in Grand Rapids about art already. And so the more that we're moving that out into the public spaces, the more full that conversation can come, become. So pros and cons. Artists sometimes need to take responsibility for the production, promotion, and sales of their work. And there's a little bit um, there are reduced commissions for galleries, so galleries aren't always super excited about sort of underground shows, but in Grand Rapids we have a really healthy environment where um, the gallery owners and are really tied into what we're doing kind of on the underground, if you want to call it that. So here are, I'm going to go over just like five brief ideas about how to do and what is happening in Grand Rapids. So you can rent or own a space. Um, empty storefront spaces, this little thing called Free Radical that was started by Mark Rumsey. Um, it took over empty storefronts, put artwork in them. It's not a new idea, but he really revolutionized it here in Grand Rapids, made it big. And now, you know, we have this thing called Art Prize. And maybe it couldn't happen if that hadn't happened first. Um, so low end, like one of the coolest shows I've ever been to was a bunch of artists just hung up their stuff in, in their living room and invited in the public. And, um, and I know that beer horse do this on a regular basis. They're inviting people into their home, they're using it as their gallery space, and it's more unique and more interesting because people get to find out what's happening in Grand Rapids and actually meet the artists. Um, Dinderback guys down here at the bottom, they use their space sometimes for shows as well. So find a space in a local business. Um, some great coffee shops in town host shows regularly, the Sparrows. In fact, they're going to be talking on a panel tomorrow night about their interaction with having artists. It's a great way to, to reach new audience members, and it's an interesting intersection where business and the arts can collaborate together. Using civic space. This is one of my favorite um, ways for artists to get their work out into a public sphere. Um, you know, this was actually the site where we're standing now, um, down here in the second picture in. That's what the UICA did to announce that they were gonna be building on this corner. They had artwork students create this huge mural and it was in pieces and components and then they installed it on this fence, right? And it was a really interesting gimmick about them opening the building, but it's also an amazing way to put up a temporary show in a space that wouldn't typically have artwork in it. So there, you know, there are some issues that go along with this stuff. It's a higher risk, it's seasonal, you know, if you're going to go out in the middle of winter and do a performance piece on the sidewalk on, on South Division or in the downtown area, you better be ready to, to freeze a little bit, right? And maybe your audience isn't prepared for that. So utilizing potential public showcases. This is something that I think deviates away from just like that civic space component. And there's like the reintroduction of objects that exist in the public space for purely for the use of art or for the use of disseminating creative ideas. So I think we've all seen probably the knitted pieces that end up around street poles in the downtown area. I think there are some really cool artists in Grand Rapids right now that are doing stickers and posting them up all over the downtown area. 
Um, the two mural pieces were components that were on South Division a couple years ago before the renovation of the buildings on South Division happened. So they were empty storefront spaces and they had artists come in and create murals on the empty storefronts. And then also, I love this reappropriation. There was that really terrible magazine for a while about like the nightlife of Grand Rapids. Well, it wasn't terrible. There were some cool photos and people were really excited about going out and being social, but there wasn't a whole lot of content, so it didn't last very long. And when they closed up shop, they left all of these sweet um, free bins all over the downtown area. And then a group of artists came through and started making zines and tossing them in there, and they reappropriated them. And so it was just a really great use of like, hey, this is obviously not being used. I'm going to use it. And then revamping an old idea, you know, taking an artist market, um, get, making it fresh. The, one of the pictures up here is from Store. Um, that's a project that's happening on South Division currently. We're actually looking for new artists for store, and it's a collective space where we're looking at work that's a little bit more commodity-based. And so we're looking to recruit artists, and it's a collective space run by artists, and um, like 80% of the sales go to the artists. And then this is one of my other favorites, mobile transportation. Look at what you have, look at what you're riding, look at where you're going, or different types of moving objects and how they can be transformed either into traditional gallery spaces or the, the, the object or the thing itself can become art. And then web distribution is something that is essential for artists in Grand Rapids. You can look at having a web site as simply a place to sell your work or you can start to think of it as its own exhibition space and how you're curating that space and the impact that that might have on the consumers who are buying your work. Um, so, well, I put up a picture from Man Camp from Heartside Hooligans. That's one of the last pieces of artwork that I bought online because I bought their album for five bucks, which was a, a really great way to interact with a band that's local that is really heavily involved in my neighborhood. So, my charge for the audience tonight is it's time to start. And I know that all of the gentlemen who are going to be following me tonight are gonna talk about the projects that they're doing in Grand Rapids that fit into these categories. And so, um, as you hear them speak about their experiences and the things that they've created in Grand Rapids, I challenge you to start thinking about how you can take what you do and move it into the public space and create your own urban canvas. Thank you, Jen. I'm glad you brought up too, like uh, storefronts and uh, vacant buildings too, because that also fits within the urban canvas discussion as well. All right, who's up next? We have projection artist Christopher Fox. Thanks, Jeff. This is going to loop behind you. It's a slideshow of some things I've done in Grand Rapids and other cities. Um, so I'm going to talk. It's going to play. It'll loop several times. I'll try to make it quick. Um, so let me talk first about some of the elements that I'm trying to uh, solve with the things that I initiate. Some of the examples you're seeing that start off are from Art Prize, the projections specifically that you mentioned uh, started for Art Prize 2009, not as an Art Prize um, entry, but as a way of contributing to the exposure, but not actually being a part of th the corporate structure of Art Prize. And once I talked to some collaborators who were former students of mine or students at the time, we decided we might as well participate instead of just being renegades. So we went through the process and became arts. We showed at Tanglefoot in the building there. And um, the projections went on buildings throughout Grand Rapids. And the idea of being able to use an overhead projector, which is analog, right? And a lot of the tools that we use are analog. Um, we, Not Design has a collaborative letterpress studio here in town. So we're using our hands to make work. And the overhead projector is analog also. So something about kind of dissing technology, but yet relying on technology. So the projection allows you to move around freely. Um, anywhere you can hook up a car battery to an overhead projector or find a drop cord within reach of projecting type on a wall, you have an instant gallery. Or you have an instant message board, an instant billboard. You have a medium you can put your thoughts on. Being mobile like that, we could put the same message in several places, try it out, and then it ended up being a photography exhibit at the end that went to Tanglefoot's building. I think the, the last thing that I kind of skipped over there was part of the uh, Tanglefoot installation where there was an individual um, standing next to an overhead projector uh, where it says be something and then that person standing next to a photograph of the word on a wall and that was the actual author of that statement 
And the idea there is that it's really interesting to me, and I think it would be to anybody involved in this kind of media of urban canvas and getting the attention of an audience and engaging an audience, is to break the barrier between audience and, and participation. And that audiences sit and watch, and the artist does, or, or they do, and there doesn't have to be a barrier between the two. And like, if you can get past that space where the people who are watching are also participating, well, then you have ownership of it. And so as an artist, really, that's a challenge because people are very hands-off, stand back, and uncomfortable with being handed something to use to help or participate with an artist. But I think that that's really an interesting challenge. Next up, we have GBSU art professor Paul Wittenbreaker to talk a little bit about his civic studio project and a few other things here. Hello, everybody. So um, Civic Studio has been going on for 12 years, and I just want to preface what I'm going to say with um, the process is very uh, uh, thick is the term that we came up with, very involved. So what I'm going to show is not really my production, but the work of uh, several different groups of people uh, working together. So this was a project called Welcome Happy Sausage that was the result of an investigation into things that were handmade. Deep into the project on Bridge Street, we, we really tried to come to terms with what it meant to be an artist in this particular area. And so we researched, this was one of many projects in this project, but we researched what was being done by hand within a three or four block area of the project. And everything coalesced around that kind of idea. We documented that, projects emerged from that, including making sausages, um, which, which we got to use this really lovely image which is so complicated. And we, get, we made a, an eight foot sausage and hung it in the window. And then this was another site. This was an industrial building on the west side um, that kind of sits strangely between residential area, commercial area, and industrial area. It's kind of like something has gone on here. You don't know what's going to go on there. It's a very strange neighborhood, cut off by two expressways and a railroad track. And, it's a very curious spot. And one of the things we did, one of the many things we did there was to turn the space into a playground. And this was really a response to the intimidation of modern, high modernist art spaces that a lot of people don't feel very uh, good about. So how could we create an event in here that was ex rich, experientially rich? Everybody knew what to do when they went in there. And it was very social. And it became the matrix for a weekend of conversations and dialogue. And there were other exhibits, too, as part of this. And then as another part of that um, idea of branding and of space, we found this thing, this little rooftop painting that somebody did for some reason. I think God is the only audience for this piece. But then when you know about it, it's like a meme that sticks in your head. It says, by love serve one another. And this is painted on the roof of an old folks home in the Creston neighborhood. And we were like, wow, that is amazing. So we stole the idea, of course, and we did our own little town club painting on the roof of, and this, that, that, that still exists actually. Um, if you look on the, on Google Maps, you can find that. All right, next up we have Erwin Irk Fitz, muralist extraordinaire. My name is Erwin, and uh, I'm known to spray paint things. A lot of the things we've seen so far are, uh, let's see if I can, yes, okay, pause. Um, you know, activating spaces, doing shows in non traditional settings. And I definitely have a lot of experience with that. You know, I moved here in 99 and moved down to Division Avenue in 2004. And during this whole time, this building and a couple more, we're talking Cherry and Division. And it was just blight. You know, I had intentions anyway of this idea of how to take a blighted building and well, somebody's going to renovate that someday. Well, that's good. That needs to happen. You know, I hate it when they tear them down. But during this time period in between, you know, I've, I've been here 
10, 10 years. And those buildings have been like that for 10 years. It's great. You have people, proud business owners, or you have people just hanging on the property. And it's your property. You know, you shouldn't be told what to do with your property. But at the same time, the buildings in your town kind of shape the mentality of your people in a way. Um, you know, driving down the street, Division Avenue has 120,000 cars a day, I'm told. 60,000 in the morning, 60,000 at night. And, you know, you have these different businesses and you want to engage these people. And so this was the beginning of a project for me. At about this point, I knew Art Prize was happening, so I was like, well, let me see if I can put some sponsors together. Let me see if I can do this the way I want to do it. So, ended up getting some sponsorship from some pretty major companies, you know, some major spray paint companies, some local businesses. This was the first art prize, so a lot of people were really excited. And I saw this as a way for me to really push what I wanted to do, which, there's no doubt, I want to expose myself as an artist, but at the same time, I want to try to change this area and see what can occur. I'm sick of looking at that red brick wall every day, so I'm gonna do this. And, you know, I, I definitely came out of pocket. I did this, a lot of it by myself. Had some friends help me out, but a lot of companies came in. And it was, it was interesting. I've, I've been in discussions over the years with people. So this went up in 2008, and this is just a little, you know, the production video of it I wanted to share with you guys. But what's occurring now is, and I'm, I'm just going to let this play for a little bit, because I've got some more photos to show you. But it was, it was a lot of fun to do this, all right? Really, I draw pictures. I run my own graphic design business. I'm, a, I'm an independent graphic artist, from screen printing to web design, all these different things. And I have a comment to say. Really, my biggest comment is in this picture is, is growth. And I want to see that part side area develop into something more. And there are multiple buildings like this throughout our city. You know, I, I was just in Detroit yesterday. There's no doubt that there are not a terrible amount of these buildings in our city, but there are more. And I, uh, I went around the last couple days and ended up taking some photographs because this project was done in 2008, but now you walk by it and my art is gone. There's no doubt about that. And I'm going to try to open these all up. My art, no. <laughs> no. Open with pre -pee. Yes. Okay. So that was that was a project that some you know people think you know our prize was over, so that project is over. But the project for me won't be over until this building is completely renovated. That was taken yesterday. Um, as you can see, the, the storefront was gone that I painted. This was a, a shot earlier this summer where they're removing half of it. And uh, there's a shot actually from yesterday. And these properties have now sold and are being remodeled, turned into apartments, turned into condos. And the project served its purpose. You know, people talk to me and they're like, oh, I'm so upset your mural's coming down. You know, I've had a couple people cry. I almost cried. You know, because I, I really liked that and I enjoyed that piece. But it served its purpose. I put it up there specifically to help that community. And now it's down. And that building is now being fixed. Now what I'm trying to do now is to continue that idea. And here's just a couple 
photographs of buildings in our district that, you know, I think temporary street art installations of sorts could go up. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. Last but not least, we have Paul Amenta, creator of Sight Lab. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> I'm just going to start this whole thing off with this little video that was made by, uh, by Premier Skate Shop. Thank you. Wasn't. Um, this was shot in uh, Two East Fulton. Uh, thanks for the setup, Irma. Um, prior to our April event there. Um, so I'm just going to run that and then I'll start. Yeah. trying to do when I have the opportunity to work in a particular site is try to do as many interesting things in that building, the site as possible. So while I have the key to that space, I try to invite as many people uh, as I can to do creative activity. And uh, our tech coordinator, Eric Hume, who's we've been collaborating for about four years now, um, he's, he's a skateboard guy. Said, hey, if you guys want to shoot something, get some skateboarders in there and maybe shoot a video. So they got a chance to play around in this raw space uh, prior to installing our project. We got in a little trouble from the fire department. And I think that's why they chose this song. So this is the inside of the building that Irwin finished up his presentation with. Two weeks old and right across the street from us. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to let this time lapse uh, loop uh, behind me here as I blab away. Um, basically what we do is we try to find unique architectural structures in Grand Rapids, not dissimilar from uh, our previous uh, presenters. Um, but one th um, so, a little bit about me. I graduated from Grand Valley in 95, and after watching Paul's presentation, I'm a little bummed. Uh, he started teaching uh, in 96 and started doing a civic studio in 99. Um, I got to miss all of that, uh, so I um, wish I was there <laughs> for that activity. Um, so basically, what we try to do is find unique architectural structures, um, typically that are in some sort of transition, maybe a new owner, uh, a new project's developing in that site, and it creates a unique opportunity for that uh, owner or, or developer to allow us to use that building and in many ways create a little bit of promotion for their project as well. Um, so this is uh, not dissimilar from what Irwin was talking about, but a little bit further along in, in that process. Uh, so what we do is we find these buildings, and then I reach out to a network of faculty and students that I've worked with over the past four years. And uh, what we're look, really looking to do is create uh, opportunities for site-specific activity and um, to engage in types of artwork that maybe don't fit comfortably in the commercial gallery uh, system or in the institutional system that exists here. Um, but we're looking to create, you know, essentially what we're trying to do is create opportunities for young artists particularly students, emerging artists, but we've also kind of branched out into uh, um, giving opportunities to local artists as well as faculty uh, in the area here. You know, if there's not an opportunity for you to show in a gallery or in an institution like this here, you can really make your own, um, you know, your own future here. And I think that's a really interesting aspect about Grand Rapids right now. Um, and just kind of wrap it up on that note. And, and, and thank Jeff for inviting all of us. So.